Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 32. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to talk about X and Y. Back in chapter 3, we talked about covariance, coefficient of correlation, and XY scatters when it came to X and Y. In this video, we want to talk about the linear equation. We want to take this data, and we are going to calculate coefficient of correlation and something called coefficient of determination. And we're going to plot our scatter plot to see if it looks like there's a linear relationship. But once we think that there is, we're going to go ahead and create this equation. Now, in math, you would have seen y, or f of x equals mx plus b the slope of the line for every one unit of x, how much does y move? The slope times a particular x plus the y-intercept. The y-intercept can also be thought of as, what's the value of this equation when x is 0? Now, in this textbook, they use y hat equals b sub 0, that's the y-intercept, plus b sub 1, that's the slope, plus x. Here's our formula to calculate the slope, and here's our formula to calculate the y-intercept. Now, here's the formula we used back in chapter 3 to calculate coefficient of correlation. And it's similar. We took the x minus the x bar times the y minus the y bar, multiplied all that out. That's actually something we're going to use down here in our slope formula. Then we divided by 1 minus 1 got covariance, and then divided it by the standard deviation of both the x and the y to get our r, or our coefficient of correlation. Down here for slope, we're not going to divide by all of that. We're going to divide by the sum of x minus x bar squared. And so we'll have this extra column here. Then for our y-intercept, We'll use y bar minus the newly calculated slope times x bar, and that will give us our y-intercept. Now here's our two variables. x is add dollars spent per week, and y is weekly sales. Oftentimes, you can think of the x as, hey, which one comes first? Which one is the predictor variable? Hey, add dollars spent, hopefully that's going to spur on sales. x, y. Let's go ahead and calculate x bar first. I'm going to click in cell B2 equals average. Highlight, and these will be relative cell references. Control Enter. So our x bar is 29,150, and our y bar 225,500. I'm also going to calculate the n equals count, and I'm going to count the numbers here. So we have a sample size of 6. Now we need to calculate our standard deviation for x and y. We'll use our equals stdev dot s. This is sample data. Broop. Control Enter. Those are relative cell references, so we can copy over. So standard deviation for the x is almost 12,000. Standard deviation for the sales, the y, about $107,500. Now, before we do any of our calculations to make our equation, let's go ahead and plot this and visually see if there is a relationship. We got our headers at the top, x and y. x is always to the left, so the chart will interpret it correctly. Insert, and there in charts is our drop down. For sample data, you always will use the dotted or marker one. All right, so just an initial look. It looks like there's some sort of direct, meaning as x, that's dollars spent on advertising, increases. It looks like the weekly sales are increasing direct. As x increases, y increases. Now I'm going to click on the title, type an equal sign, shoot up to the formula bar, and then click on cell B5, Enter. Go to the plus, and immediately say I want axis titles. That one's highlighted. I type an equal sign. I shoot up to the formula bar. I click on Y, weekly sales, Enter. I come down to the horizontal axis. Equal sign shoots me up here. I click on cell B6, X, add dollar spent per week, Enter. There, we're looking good. So our initial visual take on this is it looks like there is some positive linear relationship as x increases, y increases. So now we'll go ahead and calculate coefficient of correlation and determination. 
I'm going to scoot this down here. Now again, the two formulas for the one for coefficient of correlation and the one for our slope, the top part is same. We have to add up the deviations multiplied by each other. That is, x minus x bar, that's a deviation, and y minus y bar, that's a deviation. Get them all, multiply them, copy them down, and add them. So in this cell, I'm going to say equals, open parentheses, the particular x minus the x bar. And I'm going to hit F4 to lock it, close parentheses. Times, open parentheses, I'll take the particular y minus the y bar. And F4 to lock it, close parentheses. Control, Enter. Wow, that's a big number. And copy it down. So now we come to the bottom, Alt equals, and Enter. So now we have the numerator for both the slope and coefficient of correlation. Now I'm going to calculate coefficient of correlation. So I'm going to say equals, hey, the sum of all the deviations multiplied by each other divided by, and i got to get the n minus 1, close parentheses, and then i got to divide that by. Well, i got to multiply the two standard deviations. So I'm going to use product and simply highlight both of them close parentheses, and Enter. So there it is, 95 cents. Control, Shift, tilde, or grave accent to wipe away all that number formatting. So 0.93. And we saw visually that it looked like it was direct. This tells us it is direct and that it is positive. Now we can avoid having to do this longhand by using either Corel or I'm going to use the Pearson function. Pearson's the name of the statistician that invented this calculation. And as we mentioned back in chapter 3, when it says array 1 and array 2, we'll put the y's in first, because there's many functions related to x's and y's. Most of them want y first and then x, but the ones that say array, you can do it any in order. But I always keep it simple and remember y first, then x. And Enter, we get the same exact thing. Now, the coefficient of determination is a goodness of fit for our line. We simply have to take the r and square it. So caret 2 and Enter. And that's a pretty good number for our model. We don't have to do it longhand. We can also use r square. Known y's, this is one of the many functions that will show the y's first in the screen tip. So I'm going to highlight them and then highlight the second one and Enter. And there we go. We get the same thing. Now let's go ahead and calculate our, and I'm going to move this down here. We'll calculate our slope. So I'm going to come up here, equals, and i got to get the deviation again, x minus x bar, f4, close parentheses, caret 2. Control Enter, and I can copy this down. Now I need to add these. Over here I see I have to add them, so Alt equals. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. All right, so our slope is simply going to be, hey, I'm going to take the sum of all of the deviations multiplied and divided by the sum of the x deviation squared, Enter. And there is our slope. So it looks like our model will predict $8.43 up for every $1 of ad revenue. So about $8.5 of weekly sales for every $1 of ad. Now, we don't have to do it the long way. We can use, and they named this function smartly, slope. Hey, there's the y's. So I'm going to highlight the y's, comma, and the x's. I don't have to do any of this stuff here. you got to be kidding me. Look at that. Now, the y-intercept, if we go ahead and use our formula, we know y bar and x bar, and we just calculated our slope. Equals, we'll go up and get the y bar minus our slope times our x bar, and Enter. So it looks like minus 20,406. So at x equals 0, we'll have weekly sales of a huge loss. All right, and guess what? There's an intercept function. So equals intercept. And there's the known y's, comma, and the known x's. 
and Enter, we get exactly the same thing. Now, the beautiful thing about this is now we have our model, right? We can come down here and for our function, and I like to use the f of x, for f at add dollar spent 29,000, what does our model predict? Hey, I'm going to say equals slope. That's m times x plus r b, our y-intercept. Or b sub 0, the y-intercept, plus the slope times the x. Of course, either one will work just fine. And there it is. At 29,000, and I'm going to use some uh, number formatting here for currency. So at $29,000 spent, it looks like our model will predict 224,234 bucks about for our weekly sales. Now we want to go over and look at our second example, SI2. Hey, our data set is used Toyota Camry data. Here are miles on the odometer, and here's what the car sold for as a used car. Now, I've already plotted this. We have miles, right, because miles should probably help predict price. It looks like as the miles are increasing, the price is going down. So this is an inverse or negative relationship. And that sort of makes sense, right? The more miles on the car, the more wear the lower the price for the used car. Now you can see right here, we plotted this chart back in chapter 3, and we saw how easy it is to add an equation. But the equation on the chart is just a visual there. If you want those numbers to use to help predict, then you have to come over and make the calculations in the cell. Now we'll do our Pearson coefficient of correlation equals Pearson. I'm going to put the y's first comma, and then the x's. Enter. So it looks like there's a negative relationship. And it looks like it's fairly strong, 0.76. Our coefficient of determination, our goodness of fit, we're simply going to take the r we just calculated and square it. And so 0.59. That's not real strong, but it's OK. For our model, we can use it to predict. Let's calculate our slope equals slope. Oh, there's the y's, comma, and the x's. So the slope is going to be minus 0.08. So really, we can interpret this as for every one mile added on the Camry, we will lose 8 and a half pennies in our sell price for our used car. x and y, the slope is always going to be for every one unit of x. How much does y move? Our intercept equals in intercept. They named it smartly. We'll do our y's, comma, and our x's. And so the y-intercept, it will cross at 17,000. That means for our model, that if we drive it or push it off of the lot we just bought it, there's no miles at all, it'll drop right down to 17,000. All right, so now if we have 43,520, and I actually drive a Toyota Camry, and that is the odometer reading right now. So I'm going to drum roll and see what my Camry, what the model thinks my Camry can be sold for. Hey, I'm going to say equals x times the particular slope plus the y-intercept. Notice this one, it starts at a positive. And as x increases, it keeps subtracting uh, this amount for every one mile. So the current price, 14,000. I wouldn't pay 14,000 for my car. But that's what our model based on the data says. All right, so in this video, we saw how to take an x and y data set and calculate the slope, the intercept, and then use it in a linear equation to make a prediction. All right, we'll see you next video.